Hi. So today I thought we'd have a look at this LED lamp. Now this is one I brought from Poundland probably about four or five months ago now. It's uh, We've got the brand Electro Trek on it and it is 240 volts and 5 watts. Now I had this one in my kitchen, it's been working perfectly fine and then it, all of a sudden it started flickering, acting in a way like the um, fluorescent lamps would uh, that you often used to have in the kitchen if the uh, tube was on its way out or the uh, starter was uh, failing in it and you get the sort of few flickers and then it will come to life and it did that for a few days and now it's completely died so I thought we would see if we can get it apart I very much doubt I can fix it uh, certainly not in a way that I can get it back together again because this looks to me to be glued all the way around the outside I can try heating it and see if it will come off but I think it's going to be a bit destructive but I thought it would be interesting to have a look inside it see if we can uh, figure out uh, what exactly has failed in the unit and um, if a repair would be possible or not so I think the first thing I'm going to do is give it some heat uh, we'll use the hot air gun for this I did try earlier uh, about 120 degrees and that didn't seem to really take much effect on it so I've got this set for 150 now, uh, but as we know these tend to overshoot. I thought we'd just see, it depends what type of glue they've used. Some glues will soften up uh, when they're heated. Other glues, it won't affect. So we'll give that a few seconds. Try a bit more heat. I think I'm going to have to uh, get in there with a the screwdriver and it'll probably break it. But unfortunately, that's the uh, probably the only way to get into it. It's a shame in a way that it has failed, especially when I mean, I understandably it is pound land and it costs a pound. Now, I could of course take it back and get a replacement or get my pound back, but by the time I've driven up there and parked, etc., it's, it's not worth the, uh, the hassle. But it's a shame because you know you're kind of promoting LEDs as lasting longer, more energy efficient. At the minute, we've got energy efficiency with this one, but you know it shouldn't fail within what four or five months, really. So that is a uh, bit of a shame. But I, I shan't buy another Poundland one. I don't think I'll get a uh, a better branded LED. I've got a branded one in the bathroom. I think it's a CED one, and that's seems really really good. Right, so let's try screwdriver option without stabbing myself at the same time. Yeah, this is pretty pretty tough. There we are. Yeah, so it's been glued in since elastic down there. Alright, so this is the uh, top off. Have a look, see what we've got. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten LEDs, if I counted that right. We've got a couple resistors, one ohm, I think, 1.4 ohms, that well, might be 1k. I can never remember the. Uh, the right way to read surface mount resistors. Normally I think the end the M one's the multiplier. I think the first one if it's a zero you ignore it, so yeah. Uh, and I think that's gonna be yeah that'll be a little uh, bridge rectifier. I should think there. Alright, see if we can get this board out. So I expect whatever's failed is not going to be on this this top board. It's going to be in the circuitry underneath it. So I get this uh, elasticy stuff out, and hopefully it will lift out. It might well be that they've uh, glued that down as well. Last little bit. So 
fit. I'm not really too bothered if we can't uh, get the thing working again. Yeah, that's stuck in there quite well. Alright, so this has got a uh, these wires here for the uh, power coming in. They seem to be in some kind of I think they're they're push-on connectors. Push the wire in. I expect that what they do is because this has got looks like it's either been I would have said yeah I would have said some form of welding, but no, I think it's um it's pressed in. I think they put obviously this goes in. They push the uh, connector on it, and then these. Uh, get sort of crimped around the outside to hold it onto the uh, plastic casing. So inside, well, not much at all is there actually. A lot less than I uh, thought there would be. So we got our live coming in here on the black wire and neutral on the white, slightly odd colour scheme. Uh, that's going to be, yeah, it's an American colour scheme I think. Looks like we've got a resistor in line with uh, the live wire. We will uh, can get the meter out and measure that. Let's see what we've actually got. I did get some little uh, crocodile clips that uh, fit on the uh, meter probes. So quite useful for these sort of things. Right, so we want ohms, shove the meter there. Let's have a look and see what we're getting on this. There we are, 4.72 ohms. So yeah, just a resistor in line there. Then we've got capacitor here. So that's 3.3 microfarad, 400 volts, 105 degree rated. So the, the voltage and temperature rating of that seems uh, perfectly adequate. And then we've got another capacitor here. Uh, what have we got on that one? 250 volts to 275 volts. Um, <clears throat> can't see a uh, microfarad rating on that one. Yeah, not too sure. Anyway, test this capacitor and see if that uh, if that one is uh, working still. Might have to desolder it to get it to uh, to test correctly. I'll try and do it in line. See if uh, I'll pick up anything. Negative there, positive there. Uh, it's got 3.4 microfarads. That is certainly what I was expecting from that. Try uh, this one here. Not 0.8 microfarads. So certainly the the smaller capacitor, the black one, that seems to be fine. This one I, I'm guessing is possibly fine or it might have failed. I haven't got any of these uh, in my parts bins to replace that. We know the resistor works there. So unless the, if one of these resistors on here is gone or the uh, bridge rectifier has failed, there's not much to really go wrong on it, but it's probably just going to—it's going to be an issue of heat, I expect, because you've got the circuitry it's sort of shoved down, down the down the inside there. You know, you've got a bit of space for the heat to come out here, but I expect that it probably a lot of heat. Obviously, heat rises. Probably a lot of it's is risen up there and killed something on it. Um, let's see if we can test these. We've got 0.8. I'm measuring capacitance now, don't want that, do we? Right, try again. Yeah, it's jumping all over the place, which is, is kind of to be expected because I'm measuring it in circuit. That one's. See, that one seems to be completely open circuit. Oh, there we go, something now. 98k. 
So that's 104. I'd have to look up on a reference chart as to what they're supposed to be. Oh, what, 50 ohms on that one. And again, 49, 50 ohms on that one. Let's see if we can test the uh, bridge rectifier. All right, let's have a look. Okay, 0 0.6 volts diode drop across there. Let's try that side. Nothing there. So we've got so we've got definitely 0.6 volts die drop there. 0.6 there. There's nothing on that pin at all. It's possible that that has actually failed. Yeah, I think that that could possibly be it. I haven't got one of those either. Uh, what's the part number on that one? There's MB10F. Oh, it might be uh, M810F, I think. So if it is that, if I can look up the uh, schematic of that, find out um, what the uh, pin layout is on it, then it is possible that I could just uh, bridge a diode across it and that might uh, might get the thing working. All right, I've had a look at a uh, data sheet for that one and uh, no that does actually seem to be fine under uh, some further testing I was just uh, testing it the wrong uh, polarity on the uh, AC to the negative connection so that seems to be fine so all I can think really is that one of these resistors has failed and uh, yeah, the only way to really tell is going to be to use a hot air gun and uh, suck them off and test them out of circuit. So I think we'll give that a go, might as well, and see what happens. Okay, so I uh, I sucked one of them off, which is this one here, and uh, soldered it back on. It, it did test perfectly fine. I haven't soldered it on properly, uh, just sort of tacked it back on there for now. I don't think I'm going to bother going through the process of uh, sucking all this off at the minute. It's probably not really worth my time and uh, probably chasing a red herring. It probably turned out to be something that's uh, something else apart from those. It could be that one of the LEDs is gone and the uh, and it's stopping all the other ones. That's a, uh, another possibility. But I suspect it's more than likely to be this one. Um, like I say, I haven't got any of these around I don't think so I might consider ordering another one of these and trying it but yeah that's probably going to cost me nearly a pound with shipping to get it and it only cost me a pound in the first place so I think I'll just keep the board might be to reuse some parts of it later and um, I might revisit it in a future video and uh, see if we can get any further as to, as to what actually failed because it would be nice to know what's gone and uh, you know be aware of it if I was to ever buy another one of these Poundland ones or if any of you guys have uh, purchased one and has the same issue. So sorry that wasn't a super interesting video really but at least we had a look what's actually inside one of these. If not uh, found the actual problem that caused the failure. Thanks for watching.